Good evening everybody and welcome once again to the den of not so much doom tonight. We're going to talk a little bit about the purpose of fitness testing. I'm going to give you a few minutes for people to log on. I said I'd be starting at six o'clock so I just bear with. Hopefully you've had a great day. Lots of you on your programmes today had a five kilometre run test. I know two and they were pretty good. Pleased to say that of those two that have completed, they are, haven't gone down a great deal in their times. So if at all, I need to look at a few more results to be able to ascertain how this coronavirus and the lockdown has impacted on your running, if any at all. Now, what we are going to be looking at, obviously we did the FTP test earlier on in the week. And from that, I've been able to identify that pretty much all of you are where you are, were before COVID, if not slightly further ahead. So your training may have gone down in volume, but actually you've maintained that high level of fitness. All right, so why am I doing these fitness tests? Well, there are a few reasons why I'm doing the fitness test, and we'll go into those shortly. I'm going to start the presentation now. I hope you like my technological savvy. Okay, so first of all, we want to think about when we're going to test. So when should we be doing these tests? So the first thing you want to think about is we're going to test at the start of the block or the season or when you're very first beginning a training program. They should be a minimum of six weeks apart. Now the reason for that is because when you're training, it takes time for your body to adapt. Also, fitness tests are psychologically really hard work. They're mentally draining and they will get you stressed. If you start to taper for a test because you want your best results, then obviously you're going to lose out on some serious training time and you end up having a detraining in order to get that result. So what we're looking to do is have it a minimum of six weeks apart because that is on average the least amount of time that it takes for adaptation to take place. Bearing in mind that I am talking about an average, some people will adapt quicker and some people will adapt much longer. We might want to put them in in the build up to a race because a lot of athletes will start to lose confidence, maybe the training doesn't feel like it's where they should be, um, so they'll start to question their own ability. So what you want to be able to do is give them a mini taper, test them when they're fresh, set a realistic goal for that test, and all being well, if they hit their targets, they'll be motivated and confident going into the race. Obviously you don't do it too close to the race because you don't want it to impact on the race performance. So why are we doing it? The fitness testing is to get that baseline for you to work to, which is why we're doing it or the start of the next block. We know where we are to move forwards. If you haven't adapted as much as perhaps we'd have liked, we need to then review our programme. What are we doing that has prevented you from progressing? You might find that you haven't been following the programme as you should be. You've either been working too hard, missing out sessions or adding extra sessions, which seems to be a favourite. My job as a coach isn't so much pushing people to train, but it's actually keeping them from overtraining. By building on too much fatigue, when it comes to performing, then you're going to find it difficult. So once we've got that baseline to work to, we will then set the targets, reset the goals. You might have to change them. We might have to put, rein them in or extend your targets because you've improved more than we initially anticipated you would. So having those goals helps you to stay motivated to keep looking forwards. to inform a program. Now you don't need necessarily to be testing in order to inform the program. With the advent of training peaks for example, we're able to look at how well you're hitting your targets, we're able to review your heart rates whilst you're training and we can adjust things as we go along. However, 
A lot of athletes still prefer to do a fitness test so that they can actually see it in black and white. I was here, I was running a 20 minute 5K, and now I'm doing a 19.45. I have improved. So what we're looking at is can we show the athlete and help to motivate them? So the test isn't just for the coach to adjust the goals, but it's also, as we're gonna see here, a motivator. So it's a major motivator as long as things go correctly. We say that. In an earlier podcast that I put together, we talked about failure and how you deal with that. So what we have to look at is if you haven't hit your targets, we're gonna adjust these goals. So if you haven't hit your targets, what we're going to look at is the reasons behind that. Are there actual reasons behind that? How is your training plan gone? As I said earlier, have you done more than you should have? Have you missed out too many sessions? The key to good performance is consistent training without excess fatigue. We need to be adapting the body by causing fatigue and stress, but if that becomes too much, the body will break down and performance will be affected. So once we've sat down, we talked about that, we can motivate you by readjusting those goals. We can rationalize the purpose for you not achieving your performance that you were hoping for. So the key there is to motivate. And my final point here is to create that discussion. Obviously, we talked about that already. So the first thing, you've got that baseline, you've got something to work off, you've got realistic targets. It's all very well to come back into the sport. My FTP test today, I've been working for the past six to eight weeks on an FTP test that was done about two years ago uh, with a friend. And uh, my figures are not where they were two years ago. I'm not cycling, I've been running for the last two years. My functional threshold power on the bike, therefore, is not what it should be. It wasn't too far off from my sliding scale of happiness, which is uh, 2.8 watts per kilogram up to 3.2. Either side of that would dictate how happy I am. Under 2.8, eh, okay, I got 2.75. Above 3.2, oh my gosh, I would be so excited. But I didn't get there. Rationalising it, looking at what I have done cycling-wise in the last well, six years really, it's probably cycling once a week, and that's not going to improve my cycling performance or cycling efficiency. So consistent training is really, really important. Always have a sliding scale you know, that you have given yourself a realistic baseline. So me training on two years ago's results is not going to give me the performance I want. In fact, it's gonna set me up for failure. So now that I've readjusted my targets, hopefully I'll be more motivated to train because I won't be failing every time I go out and I'm trying to hit a certain power on the turbo, for example. And I look at other people's programs and I'm thinking, oh, they can do it, why can't I? Well, the reason I can't is because my power settings were way off. Never compare yourself to others. A lot of people will, what makes me laugh is you'll be cycling up a hill and somebody say, what's your power output? Now that's all, completely what your weight is. You can't compare your power to somebody else's. So if I'm going up at 150 watts and I weigh eight and a half stone, and my friend is going up at 150 watts and he weighs 10 and a half stone, then power to weight, I'm actually doing better than he is. So you need to, to weigh everything up. You can't just look at somebody else and say, what's that? The other thing that drives me crazy are heart rate zones. Now, it is really important to look at your heart rate zones and to use them as a guide of where you are working. Some days, you may be tipping over from one zone to another. I wouldn't stress about it excessively. What you want to be doing, if you're not hitting your targets and your zones are too high, and that lasts for three or four days, then what I would do as a coach, I will reduce your training load or volume to give you an opportunity to rest. The odd blip where your heart rate is higher could be due to stress. Mine can quite easily go up if I've had a really stressful day with the students at college. I start my run and I'm already 10 beats higher than normal. So I'm not gonna to expect to be 
if I'm going for a top end of the zone, to be in that zone. I will run for comfort, I will run for RPE. I will look at my pace. Over time, what you want to do is make sure that you are recovering effectively. Don't work off data that is five years old or 10 years old. Make sure you're working off current data. So every six to eight weeks, try and pop a little test in there. You do not need to train a test during the race season because every race is a test. If you have any questions about testing, how to test, when to test, please, please add comments below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Thank you for joining me in the Den of Doom this evening. Hope to see you soon. Good night. Bye bye.